Hey there, are you an entrepreneur looking to start, launch, or grow a podcast? If you said yes, I am so happy you're here. I'm Kristen, a video and podcast producer and CEO of Novice Studios, a production company for podcasters. I help business owners launch and grow their podcasts to serve their audience, build community, and boost sales. I hope you'll subscribe to our show so we can help your show grow from novice to noteworthy. Hey, what's up and welcome to another episode, well, the first episode of the Novice to Noteworthy podcast. I'm so excited to be chatting with you today about the four things you should not launch your podcast without. And if you've already launched your podcast, don't fret because you can always go back and add these things, work on integrating these things into your existing podcast. But if you haven't started yet, you don't want to start without these things. And by the way, If you need like logistical information or an actual checklist on the technical things that you need to launch, I have a free download. It's a podcast launch checklist. It has everything from literally soup to nuts, everything you need to start a podcast, what dimensions your cover art should be, um, my equipment recommendations, the software that you need to record, all the logistical things like that. You can download that free guide in the show notes. There's a link in the show notes for you to grab that. Um, In this episode, these are going to be things that are expanding on that launch checklist, getting into a little bit more detail and a little bit more strategy on what you want to have outlined before you start your show. So let's get started. The first thing that you don't want to launch your show without is crystal clear branding. Now, this is way more than just the visuals of your cover art, although that is very important too. You want it to have the colors, the fonts, um, an image of you, if applicable to your overall show and the overall message that you're trying to convey. Um, You want to have all of those things, but more importantly, it's also the actual title of your podcast is included in your branding. It's the music that you select. It's the messaging or like the fun words or phrases that you intersperse throughout your show. All of those things factor into the overall branding and you want your branding to be so clear that people know exactly what your podcast is about. They can find you on all podcast platforms. Um, I'll get into that more in a second. You want all these pieces to be connected with each other and I can do an entire episode on how to title your podcast, but as a general tip, while you want your podcast name to be branded to you, you also don't want it to be so branded that people don't know what you do or what you offer. Um, This podcast is about podcasting. If I called it the podcast podcast, would that be accurate? Yes. Would I get lost in a sea of every single podcast that has the word podcast in it, whether it's about podcasting or not? Yes. (laughs) So I had to take that into consideration. I have like a short kind of title and then I have a long tail after it. So the podcast is called Novice to Noteworthy. My company is Novice Studios. Noteworthy comes from the new and noteworthy section on Apple Podcasts where like trending podcasts are featured. Um, And then of course it's an alliteration, which we love to see. Um, But after that, it's a podcast strategy or podcast strategy for entrepreneurs. So I don't want to call it a podcast because, again, that's going to get mixed in with everybody who has podcasts in their title, but podcast strategy better describes what I do while still having that fun branding at the front of the title. The next thing that you don't want to launch your show without is a content theme or niche. And I know that the word niche gets a lot of flack sometimes for like painting yourself into a box. This isn't about that. Having a niche or really strong through line throughout all of your content is going to make it easy for new listeners to one, find you and two, land on your show and be like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect show. This is exactly what I'm looking for from an information perspective, content perspective. So again, using myself as an example, my overall podcast is about podcasting, but I'm also going to talk about energy management because if you are feeling low energy, you're not going to produce very good content. And what do you do if you're in a low energy state? Like, do you hype yourself up? Do you take a break from your show? All of those things I'm going to cover on the show, 
but I'm also going to talk about general entrepreneurship. So systems and processes, behind the scenes of my own business, rough times in my business, what I've done well in my business, um, launch strategy things, all things connected to business owners because the specific audience of podcasters that I'm looking to talk to are business owners. So that is kind of the through line. It's podcasting, it's business ownership, it's energy management. All of those things connect to small business owners who want to start their own show or grow their own show. Um, So a niche doesn't mean that you have to get so specific that it's hard to come up with content ideas. The themes allow you to branch out and build off of that overall theme and still be connecting with the audience that found you. If your content is all over the place, it's going to make it hard for people to subscribe and continue coming back to your show because they're not really sure what to expect from you on any given week. The third thing you don't want to launch without is amazing episode titles. And this, again, I could do an entire episode just on this topic and I will because it is an art and a science and it's really difficult to nail down like what is a good podcast title especially if you're just starting out and it's a skill that we've even built on in the last few years with my business and for our clients but generally speaking it is a balance of using searchable keywords which means not just the keywords that you might use to find something but how is the person who's looking for information about that topic going to search for it and then you're balancing that out with What's going to make them click on an episode? What's going to make for an enticing title? Using this episode as an example, um, the title is Don't Launch a Podcast Without These Four Things. Now, I don't want to do my own horn too much, but I feel like that's a really good title. (laughs) Um, So let's look at it. Launch a podcast or podcast launch. Those are going to be keywords that people are searching for. And I kind of went back and forth and I might go back and forth before it's published, but if it's not called don't launch a podcast, it might be don't start a podcast without these four things. Because again, you want to think about how your target audience is going to look for that information. Is going to What are they going to type into Google or what are they going to type into Apple Podcasts to land on that topic? Is it going to be podcast launch? Is it going to be start a podcast? Is it going to be launch a podcast? And of course, you don't want to like fill in your title with every single iteration of those. But which do you think is the most likely that's going to be searched for? So I'm going to go with don't launch a podcast. Launch a podcast. Maybe they're searching for how to launch a podcast. So we're going to, you know, get that keyword in there. Um, Without these four things. This is like stop, halt, take a second, take a breather. Are you about to hit publish on a podcast without these four things? Like, I hope that it makes people stop and like really think about what they're, you know, what action they're about to take and like, do I have my ducks in a row? Because another thing about my audience is that these are people who plan pretty far in advance for things in their business and they want to do things right. They might not necessarily be perfectionists. But they do, they do want to do a good job at what they're putting out into the world. So if they're like, wait a second, am I missing something? If I'm missing something, I want to know about it before I hit publish and not find out about it after. But again, if you're finding this episode after you've already launched, all you have to do is just tweak a little bit, you know, tweak a few things here and there. You can always change the title of your podcast. You can always change your cover art. You can always introduce new music and all that stuff. But, you know for this, the title in this example, the person that I'm speaking to wants all their ducks in a row, they're going to click on that title. At least I think they are. (laughs) You'll find out because I'm going to share all the analytics from this podcast. So I'll tell you if they clicked or not. And I'll be honest with you. The last thing that you don't want to launch your podcast without is video versions of your show. Um, This can be a little bit scary, especially with long form content. You've heard about how important short form content is, TikToks, Instagram reels, YouTube shorts, 60 seconds or less, getting straight to the point. Sitting down and making a talking video is really intimidating a little bit. Um, And it's also a lot more to set up. You know, if you're just recording a podcast episode, all you need to do is plug your microphone into your computer and hit record. And as long as you're in, you know, a recording environment that's pretty good acoustics, that's all that you need from a setup perspective. And you can have your laptop right in front of you. I still have my laptop in front of me. If you're watching the video version of this, you're going to see me glancing at my laptop for my notes. 
It just is what it is, but it feels like a lot. However, according to a Florida State University study in 2021, 70% of podcast listeners consume their podcasts on YouTube. 70%. That's huge. That means if you're focusing on audio only, of course you can grow your show with audio only, but you're missing a huge audience on YouTube. And not only that, but when it comes to podcast SEO, it's just not up to par, like not even close with YouTube SEO. Because YouTube is the number two search engine in the world, owned by the number one search engine in the world, which is Google. They have SEO down to a a science and an art. They're the best of the best when it comes to searching for things. So no matter how somebody types in what they're looking for on YouTube, YouTube is going to work their little tails off to make sure that whatever content is the most relevant to whatever it is that they're searching for is going to get pushed to the top. That also means that if somebody is searching for your content five years from now, they can still land on your video. That's one of my favorite parts about YouTube and podcasting as platforms is that people can find old content just as easily as they can find new content. And that's amazing. That's something that you don't get on social media. Um, But I digress. I also want to point out that if you are wanting to post more video content on social media platforms, short form content, if you record a video versions of your podcast, you can splice them into shorter videos and publish those on TikTok, on LinkedIn, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, you name it. You now have this plethora of content that you can pull from for that those short form videos. Also, Joe Rogan, love him or hate him, he also showed us that publishing, you know, two to five minute long videos from your full length podcast episode is a great way to grow your show, especially if they're super attention grabbing, if they're controversial, which we're going to get into in another episode, because I think that's something that we need to talk about going into 2023. Um, But it's just a good way to grow your show. So out of all of our clients in 2022, the ones that experienced the most growth in monthly downloads had a presence on YouTube. They publish video versions of their show every single week. And even if their their video views didn't look that impressive on YouTube, it still translated to podcast growth. So something to consider if, again, if you've already launched your podcast and your audio only, consider adding video to it. It's only going to help you. It's not going to hurt you. It might be a little bit more work and a little bit extra effort, but it's absolutely worth it. So that is it for my list of the four things you shouldn't launch your podcast without. If you are finding that you need more support in launching your show, we do have a podcast launch package and I would love to be a partner with you in that endeavor. You can head to the link in my show notes to book a discovery call with me and to learn more about that service. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next episode. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Written reviews are incredible, but even a quick five-star review is so helpful for our show. You can also rate us on Spotify. If you listen over there, you can give us five stars over there as well. Be sure to follow us over on Instagram and YouTube at Novice Studios CLT and share the show with a fellow podcaster to spread the word. See you next time.